Now, I know it's a, a free for all at the podium, but we can have some fun. Uh, had a good day? Yeah. You think climate change is difficult? I've just come from refereeing a six year old's Halloween party. <laughs> it's all, I want to be the number one witch. No, I want to be the number one witch, which strangely reminded me of my old days at the Green Party 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> To, um, she wanted me to dress as, a, as an oak leaf, and uh, I, I didn't have a, an oak leaf com, um, costume. But what I did have, I found when I kind of dived into wardrobe, is this t shirt that I'm, I'm wearing. Now, you might not be able to come and totally see it. It was made for a very special purpose. Um, it says Day of the Dead along the top, and at the bottom it says uh, BP Killing the Planet. And you'll notice in design terms, those interested in design, rather clever initial BP, like the eye sockets in, 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 the, in the skull. Um, because, uh, and why did I make this? I made this because extraordinarily, BP sponsored a special um, event at the British Museum all about the Day of the Dead. Uh, my initial reaction was, this is outrageous, yet another example of oil firms stealing the cultural centre ground and normalising behaviour which is fundamentally an And then I thought, well actually, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, it, it, it's rather clever, isn't it? Because when you're called is actually killing the planet. Sponsoring the Day of the Dead, it kind of goes together. I thought, bloody clever, these people, these oil companies. Um, and when you look at their track record, when you look at Mr. Tony Hayward, um, the, those mortal lines after he took over the, the chief exec um, post from John Brown, and, and, and he said um, the problem with BP was, and I quote, that it had too many people trying to save the planet. <laughs> a, that was a bit of a shock to us at the time anyway, but B, you thought, whoa, this is, this is going to be interesting. Um, he also offered, the, you know, offered up those immortal words about how the world's probably single largest pollution event ever was uh, just a drop in the ocean. He, he actually did say that the proportion of the amount of oil in the Gulf of Mexico was small in um, comparison to the amount of overall water. Uh, which, for me, it was a bit like saying that the, you know, the the, the arsenic I'm putting in your drink is small in comparison to the amount of gin and tonic. Um, but it never ends, it never stops. So here we are, going two years into a massive um, recession where somehow we're still enabling ourselves to run headlong towards the environmental um, cliff. And I don't know, Bannon, um, Bannon's got many good things going for it, um, it has a wide range of billboard advertisements that you can look at. And the one that's been there for the last two weeks um, caught my eye because it said this. It said, no, 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 no. There are no limits. It was an advertisement for the One Capital World Mastercard. Limits, ladies and gentlemen, limits. Why is it that the people we so often find ourselves debating with have no conception of limits? Sometimes it can reach extreme proportions. And given that the mess that we are currently in is the direct consequence of a death fueled boom of overconsumption driven by bonus culture and speculation, I thought the advert was interesting. What deeply irrational core is there to people who, for example, the gentleman from a, uh, shall we put it politely, a conservative, or a more conservative think tank than the New Economics Foundation that I was debating at the Science Museum um, last year, it, when I pushed him, I said, when push comes to shove, where were the resources for your model, your assumption of infinite economic growth come from? And he paused. He missed half a beat and then said, asteroids. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. That is the response from the economic mainstream. You look at the paper last week. The photographs of um, Sir Philip Green and Boris Johnson marching through the West End, grabbing their 
uh, their shopping bags from these high-end stores. You saw, did, did, did anybody notice this new shopping mall that's open right, right in the city, right next door to St Paul's Cathedral? It's called, brilliantly, One New Change. You look at the list of shops and it would be far more appropriately called the same old crap. Um, <laughs> I kind of quite like the idea that the shopping mall was kind of in competition with people's souls with St Paul's next door. I wonder if it was winning. Same week, same week, we hear that the chief executives of the FTSE 100 are getting 55% pay rise. They had a 55% pay rise last year at the same time that everybody, everybody else is being told that it's cuts, cuts, cuts. And the people, the poorest members of society, and women in particular, will be hit first and worst by the comprehensive spending review. But the problem with these images, these images about people trying to get back to business as usual, while we're all trying to get to zero, Carbon Britain is that it plays to a deep thing over which we don't have as much control as we would like to think. It does a thing called stereotype activation. This is something that we look at in behavioural economics. Um, I did a little test. I did a little test. I took one day and I counted every advert that I saw that prompted me to be first and foremost a, a consumer, someone who defines themselves by what and how much stuff they consume. I came up with a number of about 454. Then I counted how many public messages I saw that encouraged me to think of my responsibilities. There were three. There were so few that I remember them all. One of them was on the railway, and it asked me to please not beat up their staff. Another one that addressed me as a motorist, even though I'm not a motorist, and it said that I please not run over cyclists, a message I'm sure that you would um, enjoy. And the other one was just asking if I just happened to see someone being mugged. So you have this ratio. But spread out over the year and allowing kind of watching a bit more TV, reading more papers at the weekend, a sort of stereotype activation, consumer first, public citizen second, at a ratio of about 180 to 1. This matters because in behavioural economics you realise that the signals you get actually physically affect your behaviour. There was a brilliant study done where two groups of people were taken. One group was um, very subtly exposed to the stereotype of old age, words connoted being old. The other group wasn't. And then the two groups were observed. And over a period of time, the group that was sort of prompted with the notion of sort of being old actually started moving more slowly. They actually started forgetting things more often. So we live in a cultural paint pot, which is telling you not about reducing consumption and being responsible, but defining yourself first and foremost as someone who just consumes stuff. We have a problem. Um, and yet, and yet, and yet, Right at the heart of the establishment, they know that the model is bust. Anne Greenspan, the godfather of finance-driven capitalism, growth-oriented capitalism, stood up two years ago to a Senate committee in the States and said, I discovered a flaw in the model that I believed defined how the world works. Oh dear. Especially when you've been running in effect the global economy for 20 years. Merlin King described the bailout of the banks as the biggest moral hazard our modern economy has ever seen. And in reference to a previous speaker's comment about another round of um, bank crises, um, he's right, I know this for two reasons. One, because the New Economics Foundation published a report about it two weeks ago saying there's going to be one, so there will be one. And secondly, because Merlin King has stood up and said exactly the same, that without radical re-regulation of the banks, they're cruising for another bailout and another round of crises next year. Nicholas Stern obviously has described climate change as the biggest market failure the modern world has ever seen. And in their turn, um, bless him, uh, moving from being the head of the CBI to the head of the Financial Services Authority, has called for us to dethrone growth. Hello. <laughs> I'm being told to go back and clean up after the party. I did leave about 10 minutes before the end. Really good timing. Um, so what in practice are we going to do about this? Well, there's no time to go into a huge amount of detail, but we did...